One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. End of test. This is in contact with a test. One, Roger, you're locked. Clear here. Hold on. Welcome to our show, Marcel. I'm very glad to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, did you enjoy the visit of the Moon Campus? I did. It's beautiful, especially the view of Earth from, yes, you're from right. the Moon is spectacular. So you are a very busy man, but you found the time to come here and you still find the time to tweet and it's actually a big part of your job, right? That's right, I tweet for many reasons. Uh, mostly I'm trying to do science communication, which I think is important. Um, and especially this year, of course, it became more important for me as an epidemiologist. But I'm also actually using Twitter as a data source for the kind of work that we do, where we mine Twitter data to understand what people are saying about certain health issues. And of course, that year was quite special. Yeah, because you are the head of the Digital Epidemiology Lab at EPFL. And yes, as you said, it's probably an exciting time for you. Yeah, certainly exciting. I mean, epidemiology is always exciting. Um, there's always something happening, um, either new or already existing. Certainly the digital aspects which we focus on are very exciting because there's a lot of new things one can do with the new digital means. But yeah, this year of course was quite special, not only with respect to what we did initially on Twitter, but then later also with apps and other things. Well, you actually wrote an interesting tweet that made me laugh when I read it. If I may read it, it's trans -alter disciplinary when multiple people work in an area which none of them have expertise in. Is that an inconvenient of this crisis? I mean, it was, it was um, a joke, um, also a bit directed at myself, because I've definitely also been in those shoes where uh, some of us were getting excited about a particular topic, and then somebody reminded us, hey, actually, we have no, <laughs> no expertise in this area. But uh, it did sometimes have funny, funny consequences this year when suddenly everyone, independent of their field, right, economists, physicists, everyone started writing epidemiology papers. It was very interesting, so I had to poke a little fun uh, at that. But I mean, in general, of course, I quite appreciate interdisciplinary work between different disciplines. But you do have expertise, especially in epidemiology, but also in many areas, as we will see. You did part of your studies in the US, I believe. Yep, so I, I went there um, as a postdoc and then I stayed, um, became professor there. Um, and it, it is a different life for sure in, in many ways. What I liked about the US is this sort of can-do attitude um, and this sort of pioneering spirit. It's not always in all cases a good thing, but in many cases, and certainly when you're a scientist and you're trying to discover and create new things, it's a very good thing and I quite quite like that about the US. Yeah, something that we don't have here in Switzerland, or maybe less? I think we have it in Europe in general a little less. And again, that also has its strengths, right? Sometimes um, they're they're doing they're doing too many things and not, not thinking deeply about it. So it's it's important to find a good equilibrium. But you tried the freelance lifestyle of San Francisco. All across the nation. Such a strange vibration. And you tried to launch a startup as well. That's right. So, yeah, in the beginning, I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area for, for my postdoc at Stanford. But then I got this job offer at, at, um, in Pennsylvania, at the university in Pennsylvania. So we moved there. But then a couple of years later, that the California bug bit me again. And I anyways had this idea of a startup. So um, I also got into this fabled um, startup incubator there called Y Combinator and I just had to try it. So I went, I went to my dean and said, okay, I'm, 
I'm out for some time, maybe forever. But then it didn't become forever because it didn't work. But um, I learned a lot in that year. I think I learned probably more than I learned to, during the four years before. Yes, this is something important I think that you bring up here is sometimes we forget the importance of failing and learning in the mm -hmm. process. And you could have gone on a completely different path and not be here with us today. But I believe this is not the craziest story I've heard from you in your life in the US. Yeah, well, there are maybe many crazy stories. Um, but I guess what surprises a lot of people on a personal level is when I tell them I got married um, in Las Vegas. But that was actually even before. So my wife and I got to meet each other, um, got to know each other in during our PhDs, which we both did in Zurich. And uh, we went to the US for a conference 15 years ago now. And on the way there, the idea germinated that maybe you should just go to Vegas and get married. And then what sort of started as a bit of a half joke became more and more real. And, and then we got married. But um, yeah, to the great disappointment of many people whom I tell this story, there was no Elvis involved in the, in the wedding. But what I get from this is scientific conferences is not what we believe. <laughs> so yeah. people get married as well. There is more to science than just um, than just a conference, and maybe this is also why a lot of people are a bit sad right now not to be able to go to conferences. So, got married in the U.S. is something that we didn't know from Marcel, and now let's take a look at his logbook, Life from the Moon. Regina or Napolitana? Mm, vera Napolitana. Music or coding? Music. USA or Switzerland? Both. The 2020 Switzerland. Did you eat pizza on your wedding night? I did not. I ate some horrible Las Vegas buffet. So not La Vera Napolitana. I'm not sure I can pronounce Vera this pizza as Napolitana. you do. No, no, this I, I did not eat. But I did spend many years after in California trying to, trying to get the pizza right. And now that you're back in Switzerland, did you get it right? Well, you, you, you'll never get it right, right? You always have to try to improve. But yeah, I do spend a lot of time. I mean, there's at least pizza once a week, typically Sunday evening. And it's always self-made and it takes two days and so on. So it's quite the affair. And two days for, for what? <laughs> so preparing the dough, right? You have to prepare the dough well in advance so you can do a slow rise in the fridge. So it's, it's all very complicated. I mean, not really, but um, it, takes, it takes a lot of time. So you love pizza and um, wine with pizza on Sunday evenings or? Yep, definitely love wine as well. I mean, wine is more the area of my wife who started making wine professionally um, and who's now also selling it and starting her own business. And um, yeah, she has go gone all in. I mean, I haven't quite left my job and uh, became a professional pizza maker, but maybe who knows? Who knows what happens in the future? Maybe. So let's take a look maybe at the vineyards from Switzerland, Life from the Moon. I really think she's gonna hate me For all the things I do to her tonight And maybe she will realize that That I'm not what she wants, just what she gets I really enjoyed the background music of this video. Did you choose it? Well, I, I heard about it. Um, let's put it like that. <laughs> so what, what's the story? Well, the story is I used to make music. I mean, I still do, uh, but uh, I used to play in a band. And, uh, that Fibus, was right? Fibus, yeah. Fibus? That was uh, during the time when I was a student in, in Basel. And yeah, spent, spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and yeah, we. We did quite well, but eventually all, all good things come to an end. Well, quite well. You, you did the first part of Lenny Kravitz's uh, concert, right? That's right, yeah. That's um, yeah, it's shortly. more than quite well. I can play quite well the piano. But <laughs> <laughs> we should play together then. We should. Maybe. Yeah, there should any ways be more bands here on this campus. I would like that. And where did it come from, your, your passion for music? Um, it, it grew somewhat naturally. I mean, my family is not super musical, although I did have a, a, a grandfather who was sort of into classical Swiss folklore. And so I 
eventually ended up with an accordion on my lap um, and I somewhat liked it but then as a teenager I I mean it obviously grew out of it it was too far away from the kind of music I wanted to do <laughs> to the dark side of the moon exactly. and do rock and roll instead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or even, I mean, yeah, pretty hardcore in the beginning. Well, we found one of your songs. Would you mind if we play one? Sure. Okay, let's go. So who knew you had so many talents? And people probably only know you for your skills in epidemiology and your contribution to the COVID app. Yeah, well, it was another life. And so this life seems to be more about epidemiology. But yes, this app it has kept me and many of my collaborators here very, very busy. Um, it's the Swiss COVID app. And, uh, and how is it performing? No. <laughs> I'm gonna freak out. Oh, what that one kid? Ah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's going really well. I mean, it's still, of course, takes time to convince people, right, to to download and use the app. Um, but that that is going well, and now we finally were able to even publish the first results, showing that it actually works. So we're quite happy with that. So this means we can hope to have some sense of normality back on campus this semester, you think? Well, normality is not what I would think of when I think of the 2020 winter semester. I think that's going to be still quite a special semester. But yeah, of course, I hope that the app will do its job in, in keeping things low. But as we see, there's most people think the crisis is be behind us. So why do we still have so many rules here at TPFA? So many. So many so fast. That's a good question. That's really a bit also a problem of communication. I mean, now with the measures that were put in place, we managed to really sort of control the bad side of this epidemic, right? Few people are going to the hospital and few people are dying, but that's because these measures are in place. And, uh, and now if these measures would be lifted, it would be very likely that we will go back to more hospitals um, visits and more deaths but it's sort of a classical challenge of public health if you do something and it works then people say why are we doing this it's not necessary so it's it's it was to be expected yeah surely so let's take a look at what's happening today on earth With the winter semester starting, PPFL students have been waiting for their deal with President Martin Luther at Satellite, which was cancelled due to coronavirus. Usual. Fortunately, PPFL came up with innovative solutions to welcome back the community on campus in a warm atmosphere. Interesting point, PPFL applied modular arithmetic to create the different groups, whereas Union went for colorful toppings. Anyways, we are looking forward to the new friendships arising from the system and wish them good luck for the semester. Well, hopefully, things will get better in 2021. I hope so too. How do you see the future? I eat on the pasta twice just because she is so nice, Angelina. Well, I'm an eternal optimist. I think the situation will come to some sort of new normal in 2021. And then uh, I hope we can all go back to what we did before and maybe take all the things that we learned we can do even better into the future. Or we can all migrate to the moon. That's an alternative, but it's, it would probably get crowded fairly quickly. Probably, and take cost a lot of money. <laughs> Amazing Marcel, epidemiology, rock and roll, wine and pizza. So have a great time and send us some of the pizzas and wine that you make here on the moon. We can enjoy them as well. Will do. And from all of us here at the Galactic Chloe Show, we wish you a very good start of the semester. And if you want to take part to our episodes, please send your best EPFL memes to this email address just right here.
I'm gonna freak out. Oh, what's that one kid? Ah!